Welcome to the Discussion, a new way for me to talk about all things Disney every week. Uh, weekly. We'll see if it stays weekly. I'll try to make it weekly. <laughs> I love Disney. I've always loved Disney. I own tons of movies. They're from Disney. I try to see every movie that is Disney. I love Disney. Marvel, Star Wars, Muppets. More Muppets, please. Uh, anything that's Disney. Why not? With a big company like Disney, you also have DVDs and Blu-rays. And as I've noticed over time, uh, Blu-rays and DVDs are starting to dwindle in sales, I guess, and more people are going digital. But every once in a while, yay, still release stuff on Blu-ray. New releases anyway, they also do some re-releases. There are still a couple things that have never hit Blu-ray or even DVD. It's pretty crazy that seen Blu-ray has been around since, what, 2006 at this point? And Disney's been with them since the beginning. We've been getting all their new stuff on Blu-ray, but we've never really gotten absolutely every old movie on Blu-ray. And trust me, there's some stuff that is probably never gonna see the light of day unless it just hits iTunes. I mean, do you know that in the 60s, they released almost five or six or even seven movies every single year? Yeah, try to go through their filmography. Since the 60s, they've basically been releasing a movie like every month, it's crazy. A lot of that stuff's not gonna show up on this list, but this is my personal uh, list of what I want to see on Blu-ray, but a lot of stuff's gonna correspond with what you also believe should be on Blu-ray. So here it is, uh, top 10 Disney movies that should hit Blu-ray already. Number 10, the Star Wars Unaltered Trilogy. You know, this should be actually number one, but seeing that this is a Disney list, Technically, I don't think it should be number one anyway, because Star Wars isn't really Disney. This stuff was made at 20th Century Fox under Lucasfilm. This stuff was bought by Disney, and there's a whole thing here. Technically, Disney does not own the rights to the first movie. They own the rights to everything else. They can release everything else right now. They own it, but the first movie, they can't. And it was like that until, well, Disney is buying 20th Century Fox now, and I mean, it's probably gonna end up happening. I hear every day that the deal's becoming more and more solid. I'm guessing by the end of the year, they're gonna have them. Uh, by the time they get the Disney Plus streaming service out, they'll probably be on that. So, will we ever see the Star Wars series unaltered without any of the special edition changes on Blu-ray? Under Disney, I see it happening. They know it would be one of the most highest selling Blu-ray box sets of all time. It's probably gonna come in this giant collection where you gotta get all this other stuff with it. It's probably gonna cost like 200 bucks, but I would pay it because it would be Star Wars unaltered and hopefully cleaned up for modern, you know, home entertainment standards, not the 2006 DVDs. Number nine, Iron Will. Uh, <laughs> this is kind of a very personal choice. That movie was made in Minnesota, so that already makes me love it, but hey, it's the 25th anniversary, it should be on Blu-ray already, come on. I mean, it only ever got a DVD release, uh, a bare bones DVD release that uh, kind of disappeared, so yeah, it'd be nice to see it on Blu-ray, especially since, if you think about it, there's a lot of movies from the 90s that have already hit Blu-ray from Disney, a lot of them have been Disney Movie Club exclusives, so they're catching up on a lot of that, and I see Iron Will happening, and I could see it happening this year. Number 8 is So Dear to My Heart. This is from 1948, I believe. This hit VHS, and it had a small DVD release, only a Disney Movie Club exclusive, and yeah, ever since then, people kind of don't talk about it. People don't really know about it. It kind of got overshadowed by, well, the other great animated movies that were made in the 40s from Disney. And since this isn't an animated film, it's a hybrid, people kind of just forget about it. Especially since, you know, Song of the South came out and most people talk about that more for the controversy nowadays. And then people just talk about the other great Disney hybrids, like Who Framed Roger Rabbit? I've never seen the movie, <laughs> which is bad. But the point is, historical. The movie should be considered history because it's one of the first uh, animation hybrids to come out. They didn't really do those back then. It was a tough thing to do, especially during that time period. I can't even imagine how tough it was. And Disney managed to do it not only with Song of the South, but also with So Dear to My Heart. And this is one just no one talks about. Number seven, the Disney Legacy Collection. So what were these? Well, this was the series that released all of the Disney nature documentaries. Not the new ones, but the ones that were made back in the 40s. Uh, Disney was really big into doing that. I guess he just wanted to tackle every single 
uh, type of medium. Documentaries, they were next. He would do television next, and theme parks, and, you know, if he would have stayed alive, probably would have taken over the world. Probably. But, the Disney nature sets have, uh, gone up in price because either they were limited or they didn't make a huge print of them and everyone bought them out, but the point is, it's hard to access them at this point. It'd be nice to see all those documentaries be cleaned up and thrown on Blu-ray on affordable sets or at least Disney Movie Club exclusives, especially since, yeah, they're important. I think they're important. They're historically relevant. Hell, it has documentary footage from the 40s, which that itself should be important. There's not a lot of stuff like that. There's news clips, and every once in a while, you had someone just, you know, recording stuff, but not a lot of documentaries were made back then, not on the level that they are today. Number six is 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. So, this was one of the first live action Disney films. It's still one of the most important. Uh, it still has a huge impact in the parks today. Even though the ride is closed, the impact, it's still there. People still talk about that ride all the time. And the movie, I mean, it's on VHS, it hit DVD, but after a one-time DVD release, it's really never seen the light of day again, which is too bad. There is an HD version of the movie on iTunes, but, you know, that's... I mean, it's proof that they can do a Blu-ray release, but why haven't they? With all the Disney Movie Club exclusives that they've done, you know, they did one of uh, I'll Be Home for Christmas, for God's sakes. So if they can do that, they should be doing this. They do have one of the Davy Crockett films, they have them of the Love Bug films, they have them for the all the parent traps, well not all, they're just the first one in the remake. The second, third, and fourth one, the TV films, they all disappeared, but the point is, if all those movies can hit Blu-ray, why can't 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, especially since I think this one is more well-liked than a lot of the movies that have hit Blu-ray. Number five is the Disney Treasure sets. Well, now they're all out of print and they're pretty pricey, which is too bad. A lot of these have tons of animated shorts or stuff like the propaganda films, uh, Victory Through Air and Power, that propaganda film. A lot of this stuff is just Disney history, stuff he made for the theme parks. You can get all that stuff on these Disney treasure sets, but now you can't get them anymore because they're too expensive, which is too bad because these are some of the most important DVDs that Disney's ever released. So it'd be nice if they just released them all on Blu-ray, but at this point, do I see it happening? I don't know. I mean, it probably costs a lot of money for them to remaster everything. And on top of that, would it be worth it? Would a lot of people be forking over the cash who already bought the old sets? Because to a lot of people, it would be a double dip. It's going to be the same kind of people who are buying it, unless you've got people like me who didn't buy them the first time. But a lot of people my age just kind of want to do stuff digitally, so I don't know. Maybe a lot of stuff from Disney treasure sets will just show up on Disney Plus streaming service, but... We'll see. Number four is Make My Music and Melody Time. This one's simple. Uh, I believe they will probably do a double pack of this on Blu-ray eventually, just like they did with Saludos Amigos and The Three Caballeros. Uh, and of the package films that were released during the 40s, they also combined The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad and Fun and Fancy Free together on one Blu-ray set. It came with The Reluctant Dragon. So all the Disney... Uh, animation canon films, everything done by Walt Disney Animation themselves, the 50 or some movies that they consider to be from their studio, official animated films, have almost all been released on Blu-ray. Now there's only three left. Make My Music and Melody Time are two of those. They're very similar films, they're package films, and they're probably both gonna end up getting a Blu-ray release eventually. The only thing that I could guess is holding it up uh, would be the fact that some of the clips are edited, so I suspect that maybe they're working on an unedited version of both of those movies to finally release on uh, Blu-ray, and then, you know, finally they'll be that much closer to releasing all the Walt Disney Studios animated films. There is one more, but we will get to that. Number three is a Goofy movie. Yeah, come on. This is one of the most popular Disney films uh, from the 90s. It's one of the few that isn't from the official Disney canon, but it's still, you know, it's considered by a lot of people to be a Disney film. It's a Disney Toons studio film, but 
that's enough. That's enough for it to be Disney to most people. And it's kind of crazy at this point for how popular it is that it hasn't hit Blu-ray yet. Do I think it'll happen? Yes, eventually it will. I know the movie has been on Netflix before, along with the sequel, and I suspect that when they will release it on Blu-ray, they're probably going to put it with the sequel. I don't remember the sequel much, but I, I, I have a huge fondness for the first movie, so I would love to see it on Blu-ray. They'll probably do it eventually, but for now, that is number three. That is way up there, because come on, come on, Disney. Number two is The Black Cauldron. I mean, yeah, this is the other Disney... Uh, from the Disney official canon to never be released on Blu-ray. They did do a DVD set a couple years ago for the 25th anniversary, but one of the reasons I, I suspect that hasn't hit Blu-ray is, one, kind of unpopular, a lot of people don't like it, people don't really remember it, it was known as being the film that almost tanked the entire studio. I mean, Chicken Little's on Blu-ray. Why can't the Black Cauldron be on Blu-ray? Uh, another reason I think it hasn't hit Blu-ray though is I think Disney's working on it. I, I believe that. There is a version of the movie that was uh, cut. You know, it's very famous that uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg, when he was hired on, came on when they were doing The Black Cauldron and he basically cut a bunch of scenes out. Sometimes the music doesn't even match properly because, yeah, it was that late in the game that they were cutting these scenes out. So do I suspect that they're maybe making an unrated version or like a director's cut of the movie to also release on Blu-ray. So maybe that's why they're waiting on it. So they're trying to make it very worthwhile for the fans of the film and for uh, Disney buffs and you know, just to make the release really worth it. And number one is, yeah, I think everyone saw this coming. Song of the South, it is controversial. And you know, it's just a matter of, there, there, you can go on YouTube and watch tons of videos about Song of the South all day. I highly recommend uh, Lindsay Ellis's video on Song of the South. I don't know if it's up on YouTube anymore, but she did a wonderful video about it, talking about the racial problems with it, but also about the fact that it is a boring movie. <laughs> and it is. But the reason I think it should be on home video is because one, you could easily get around that stuff by throwing in some disclaimer or even a special feature about the impact of the film and how it might even have a negative impact. Talk about stuff like that. Disney's released racist cartoons before and they throw in disclaimers, they have videos talking about it. and you can do it. I think people are going to be disappointed by <laughs> how bad the movie kind of is because it's just sort of your, a generic flick. But come on, it's it's too important to not be on any form of home video. It's not on VHS, it's not on DVD. It might never hit Blu-ray. I know in Japan for a while they had a laser disc of it. I guess Japan's fine with movies involving uh, racism. That movie has nothing yet, which is weird. It's it's just really weird. If you want to go on YouTube, go ahead and watch it. <laughs> You're not going to be in for much. So that was the first episode of the discussion. Uh, please let me know what you think of this series. Should I continue it? I hope so. I kind of want to use this as an opportunity to talk about some obscure Disney stuff, some Disney TV shows, other movies that hit Blu-ray, Disney parks, anything Disney. So hopefully we'll keep this up weekly and thanks for watching.